Ready, set, art, pollinators. So this theme is about uh, pollination and the little critters that go with it, some flowers maybe, so we can get ready for this next contest, which is about pollinators. So I want to show a bee from the aerial view, one from the side, the butterfly with a daisy, and a hummingbird. You probably wouldn't have thought of a hummingbird, right? But it's there, so I wanted to show that one as well. Let's get started. So the reason I want to show these two types of bees is because there is an interesting that thing that happens with the wings. And you may decide that this is the way to go for you. The other thing I want you to practice is a honeycomb because you might want to use a honeycomb. So in this case here, you're creating those hexacons, but I want to see those little highlight shine. So how, how do we get that started? So because I'm in a demonstration, I'm going to draw them bigger than you would think. And I'm only going to draw like maybe two. All right. So hexagon. Now you may be thinking, well, why can't I just do this? Well, the problem is, is the line work in between. We know that with honeycombs, and I'll show a picture in class, when you actually see them near each other, there's this white space in between. So I wanted to make sure that you understood that before getting started. All right, so here you have your hexagons, and I could just keep going, which is what was in the example. I want you to make sure you have some highlights in there. Why? Because when you look at a honeycomb, the inside is filled with honey. And it's almost like a dipped pool of the honey that's in there. So when the light hits it, there's this highlight on one side, almost like a moon shape. All right. So I do want you to practice a honeycomb so that you understand what it looks like. Now, I can keep going, but the basic idea is that you'll do a smaller version so you don't have to shade like crazy. But you'll do something like this, and I want to see the white spacing in between and the highlights. Okay, I want to see the highlights. Okay, next, this type of bee. So I'm going to start with an axis line, make the body, then add the wings, legs, antennas. Okay, so here we go. Here's my axis line. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and shape this little head. And it's not a perfect circle. So you may choose to do a cartoon version for the main piece. But for this rough draft, you're almost going for this weird jelly bean shape with a little point right here. A little point. Okay. And then I want you to create this kind of a weird oval on each side. Oh, there goes my dog. I hope you heard that. And then from there, I'm going to create this little fluffy middle part. And then this is much wider than you would think. As I was drawing it, I was surprised how wide that was. Okay. And I may even still correct that. We'll see. All right. So then you get that in. Maybe I'll add more fuzz. There's even some fuzz right here. Leave a little highlight inside the eye. Okay. Oops. That even more shaded. See? Artists make mistakes. You just have to correct as you go. Okay. So now I have this part and I'm going to section this off. I noticed when I was drawing them, it's not always equal. Okay. And as in the black part. So this part was normal. It starts to get a little bigger and whiter. And then at some point it's just plain black. Right. Now I'm ready for the wing. Okay. So here's the hard part of the wing. Whatever you put on this side, has to equal this side. So whatever shape you do here, guess what? It has to be the same shape on the other side. Okay, so let me double check that. So I'm doing a C measurement to make sure I have the length correct. And then I try, I try to shape it as best I can to the other side. Okay, as best I can. And then I go in with the other one. There's another smaller one right here. And you guessed it, whatever shape you put on that side has to be the same shape on this side. Okay, actually that, that came out pretty good. I have to tell you on 
on this one it took like four tries to get that just right so um, if you're thinking for your design this is exactly what you want because most of the time when you see BR it's just like this it's from the aerial view but just understand that it has to be symmetrical for the wings and that sometimes can be a pain okay so next are these little little legs and they're done in sections they're like three sections each so one two should remind you of crabs I guess that's how I would think about it so little sections and then these little feelers okay it's the same right here for these little antennas there's a little section and then it kind of goes off a little section goes off okay there's a, a foot here okay and it goes behind now you might think why didn't I do this before well because the wing is translucent so you might as well overlap it okay and it's going to kind of look kind of fuzzy under there the next little leg and again it's done in sections and I'm doing it very sketchy right now that main version is after I cleaned it up I went back and I cleaned it up to make it look more exact for you okay so we have the basics in whatever you put on this side just remember it has to be the same on the other side so look one two three so I go over here do the same thing okay one two three okay. so basically I can keep going but you would go and clean it up and do a little shading so I know where the black part is next one from the side and now this one may be the more popular one or even one from the front where you just see the head and the wings kind of popping out from the sides that might be a good one too uh, what's nice about this is that the wings don't have to be exact right because we're seeing them at different angles so that's actually kind of a, a good thing the first thing I need to figure out is my axis line so it kind of goes like this then like this then like this I'm gonna move this paper to the side because I'm done with it and I'm ready so let me straighten out my paper let me straighten out this paper okay so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in then this and then the head that wing is coming from over here and this wing is coming from over there all right I'm ready to go ahead and shape I think I'm going to start here actually that made it easier for me and again this was bigger than I than I thought and then it's all fuzzy right here And then this was an interesting shape because it's kind of rounded here and rounded here and then it flattens out it flattens out and then it has this little hook right here and of course they have really big eyes and there's this highlight so I try to section off a highlight area so that I when I shade later I don't go over it and it, then it reminds you of that beat and then there was all sorts of little fuzz going around it I love the little antennas from here because it kind of starts here and then another little section and then it kind of feels out okay very interesting all right so that gets this part in let's go ahead and figure out the legs so it kind of starts here because it's foreshortened that means we don't see this completely it's just really very short there and then this part comes out and again like I said legs are done in three parts this again we don't see this back part of the third part of that leg so we're only going to draw two parts and then this part here kind of almost goes out like this it should remind you almost like a praying mantis how this part looks okay do another one okay. I'm going to section off this part of the body and then I'm going to section off the black got that now let's look at the wing the wing kind of comes out from the middle part of the fuzzy part and it's an interesting shape it kind of rounds out right here and then comes back in this one I'm going to go ahead and erase that line because I don't need it anymore it's coming from the back and so it's rounding out this way and comes back in so you have your basic shape and and you're ready for detailing so what's nice about this one is the wings don't have to be exact so I almost think this one's an easier route although if you want to go with this in your main piece I understand because it is kind of a, a strong symbol it almost looks like a symbol the way that it's done okay so when you finish I want to see the shading 
and I want to see some details and I want you to try the fuzz work because I think that's important for that piece. Okay, next is butterfly with a daisy. Okay, because I have a feeling some people are going to do that. All right, a lot of times when I see people do this, they want to do, um, maybe I'll use the scratch paper again, like this. And then there's a butterfly in the middle. Okay, I'm not against that, but when you're competing in a contest, you have to know that a lot of people might be using that. So how do you differentiate yourself from the people that do all the same common designs that we've seen before? Think about angles. So I'm going to show you how to draw this at an angle. I have to tell you, a lot of people do tend to like angles because it creates movement within the piece. And since we have to eventually add lettering to the poster, you might want to consider that movement because then it leads your eye back to the lettering, right? Because imagine some lettering right here. Well, then our eyes lead this way. Okay, so let's start with this daisy. I'm going to start with an ellipse and then another one, but it's going to be flatter here and wider there, stem. And now I have the basis of where all my petals need to fit. So the other ones, like I'm just kind of putting something basic in for right now, mostly because we're going to put a butterfly right here. I'm just kind of getting it going. Now right here, we start to see some overlapping into that circle because the petals are coming at us, right? So I'm going to put some more right there, some here, and here. All right, so that kind of gets us to the main shape of that daisy. You don't have to do a daisy in your piece. I just picked a daisy because um, I knew it was easy to teach. Okay, so anyways, detailing wise, you can see I went back and cleaned up those petals to make it look more realistic. Now I'm ready for my little butterfly. So I kind of arch the body just a little bit. And then from here, I'm going to put in this little face, just like this. And then a the little fuzzy part, kind of reminds you of the bee, right? And then this kind of bulky part here, has a, this type of butterfly has an interesting stripe. All right, so I have this part. Now what I like about this, this compared to having to do this one, again, it has the same issue of when you draw wings like this. So if you had to draw a wing um, butterfly from an aerial boat, you would have to make sure every pattern you did on this side was the exact same pattern you did on this side. Not in this case, because we're seeing it from a different angle. So I like that you don't have to make sure that it's perfectly symmetrical, meaning a mirror image. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, put in that part of the wing. Because we're seeing it from this side, the bottom wing is actually overlapping it. So it overlaps that top wing just like this. And then I'm going to bring this one up just like that. Okay. So pattern wise, I like how in this one, as you know, butterflies from the underside have a different pattern than the top. So that's another benefit is that you don't have to have it exactly like the other one. Okay. Moving on, getting some other sh little shapes in. legs again in three parts one two three I like that this one goes down then over one two three like this get the eye in they're nice and big and then you have to make sure to leave a highlight it makes it easier okay um, I want another leg in again one two three so now we have our main sections from here you would get this detailing in. This will of course be in an attachment so you can see the finished version, but you'd want, I want to see the little fuzz part and want you to see this, try to create that pattern to make it more interesting. I mean, if you're going to go for a butterfly in your piece, pattern really makes a difference with it. You're competing in a contest. Are you going to put something kind of plain when you know other people might also do butterflies? Or are you going to go the extra mile to do something that catches the eye of the judge? Okay, so you would keep going till you get to that point, but you get the idea of how to start it. Last one is hummingbird. I thought this was interesting. Now, the phrase you have to use um, has the word be in it, B-E-E, -E, in fact. So if you're going to go for a hummingbird, you may need a bee somewhere <laughs> just buzzing around near the hummingbird. So it 
brings you back to that slogan that you're going to have to use within the poster, right? Posters involve generally don't, it's, it, you know, the difference between a poster and an art piece is art pieces don't generally have some ad slogan inside of it. So that's kind of the difference. So in this case, I'm going to paint, I'm going to show you how to draw a fuchsia. Um, there's obviously different flowers like trumpets that you can use. I just like the idea of this fuchsia because if you look at this here, it goes in this angle, then down, then over, and it creates some space here that's great for a poster. Okay, so I'm going to get started. I'm going to go ahead and put in a little branch. I'm going to do some different leaves. Okay. Kind of funky, right? You want to be careful when you draw leaves like this. Sometimes it's just not believable. I'm going to leave that there for now though because I'm in a demonstration. I created a little fold. I'm gonna, you could obviously add more leaves, but I'm just gonna kind of keep going. All right, so that's the first part. Generally, fuchsias are in pairs or in triples. I'm just gonna draw one, but you can imagine drawing three more of those. Okay, there's a little bump right there, almost like a bead, and then it looks like another little bead, like this, and then it has four petals going off of it, just like a cross almost, or a plus sign. And then it has these kind of big, big petals right here, purplish. And then little, these little guys come down. Yay. All right. And that's what the hummingbird is going for. I'm going to put in my axis line for my hummingbird, the head, body, I'm going to go ahead and angle my wings in. Again, a nice thing about when you draw um, from an angle like this, the wings don't have to be exactly the same shape. Okay, almost there. And now I'm drawing that little beak, that famous little beak, right? And that famous little eye. Okay. I'm going to draw little feet right here. See how they're almost like little rice shapes. Now I could keep going. But that's essentially the idea of the sketch. And you would go back and detail little cool textured patterns, refine those little feathered lines like you would here, clean up your edges, maybe do some shading and clean it up. Okay. Well, I hope that helped to figure out some of the ideas and spark some interest for the next assignment for bees. Thank you and good luck.